So I spent quite a few hours this morning of my time trying to uh, decipher a Python script um, to communicate between Productivity 2000 and um, Python. So um, I used a library called uh, PyModBus, I believe is what it is. Let's go up here and look. It's uh, yep, it's PyModBus. Um, it's fairly... Uh, the, the documentation is, I would say, could be better um, in explaining a few things. But uh, I wanted to go through and show kind of the general setup on how to get uh, tags off of your PLC um, and into Python. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is make sure that you have the um, library installed. Now, there's there's other ways to do this. I'm doing it like this because I'm not using a virtual library and I'm not just, just not going to go through the command line and do it right now. So um, <clears throat> you're going to need to go down here to... So you're going to need to go down here to the Python project. So I've got a, a project here I'm calling Modbus. Um, I'm going to go to the interpreter and um, you're going to need to add a package. So I, um, you can do it this way or you can do it, you know, one of many other ways. Um, but I'm doing this just because I know that this is going to work. And like I said, I didn't do it in virtual environment or anything. So I'm going to install this package. Um, Make sure it installs here. Okay, package installed successfully. Close this. And I apologize also for not using a screen recorder. This is just what I have to deal with. So this is what we're gonna get. Close that up. Um, so we can start by going to the documentation here um, and just pull up. Let's go, let's see where we are here. Just start up here. So uh, we'll start here, over here. Here, get a new Python file, Python file, call it modbus. Okay. So I also need to include the library here. All right, so um, this is what we got. So. What you need to do is for the PLC, you're going to need to come over here. You can just go to, uh, you can find this in several different ways. You can go to hardware configuration um, over on uh, in the Productivity 2000 software. Open up your PLC, um, go to Ethernet ports, and then uh, show current settings. Okay, so we can get our IP address from there. You can also get it from... Um, and you can notice your port is 502. You don't really need that. It'll auto select this. You can also go up to uh, here and go to choose CPU. We've got our, again, 223 there. So over here, we're going to change our Modbus TCP client to the right IP address. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then we have these options here. So um, basically from there, what we can do is we can, we have got our client defined, okay? Um, and I got some other code that I've written over here earlier. So we've defined our client, uh, what we're connecting to. Um, and then what we need to do is we are going to want to, um, connect to the client. You don't have to do this, I believe, but we're going to, uh, we're going to go, we're going to assign a variable as up equals client connect so that we can see what the status of it is. And then we're going to print out that just so that we know whether or not we are connected to PLC. So let's run this first and um, yeah, let's see if this will Add this configuration. Okay, so we're gonna set this to run this Python path. Okay, and we're gonna try to execute that. All right, so um, what we got here is that it looks like it's printed that we're running. Um, we are also need to print the result here. Let's see here, so, um, so, 
it should be connected but at this port right here. That's what we've got so far. So, so far we've initialized the connection with the PLC. We can tell that the PLC is connected at that IP address and that port. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna grab something. So um, we're going to grab an input register, okay? Um, and we're going to print the result, which is just gonna tell us, this can just be one, print the result. And we're also going to print what the actual result says. So this is gonna tell us how many results it pulled from that particular register, and then this is going to tell us the contents of the registers. So what we're saying is that we went into the PLC and we read the very first uh, input register. Okay, so there's there's multiple different types of registers. We'll go to that in a second. But we pulled the very first input register and we're saying that we expect it to be a length of one. Um, some will be one, some will be more. It just depends on the type. This is gonna be an integer. Um, some sort of integer uh, from an analog input. So uh, it comes out as 13163. Um, so if we go to the PLC and we go over to our tag database, this is very important. So inside of here, whenever we have tags, um, they're not automatically going to be have Modbus labels um, associated with them, okay? So you have to populate these, and it's very important that you then um, run time transfer or stop transfer the Modbus uh, labels over to the PLC. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. You're going to be able to just you're just going to pull zeros the entire time. I did that earlier. That was a uh, several hour learning experience on why I was pulling zeros and over and over. So basically, the way it's mo it's it's going to be uh, inside of the PLC is it's going to be in. Um, descending order here um let's see here so these are these here are there's a bunch of different registers inside of here there's discrete inputs discrete outputs um and they follow the the normal formatting with the numbers in front of them for uh, modbus registers um it's this nice website from uh some canadian friends that kind of show this it's the uh so uh the ones ending in i believe it's one are coil registers, um, read coil status, uh, the twos are going to be input statuses, um, the threes are going to be holding registers, and the fours are, uh, something along those lines are input registers. Okay, so, um, so they're, they're all numbered. The first number, the only number you need um, inside of PyMod is going to be somehow to reference this number right here. Um, so, you'll, so you'll need to know if it's a zero, a one, or a three or whatever it is. And then you just need to know this, this single number here, that's the actual address. So if we go in over here, this number here is your actual address. All right. Um, and inside of Pi Modbus, it's actually be off by one. So 20 will be 19, um, 21 will be 20, et cetera, because we're gonna start at zero. So right now I am pulling this one here, which is AIS 320.1.1.1. Um, that's the analog input. Okay, it's a 32-bit insure. All right, and it is at address 3001. Okay, so whenever I go to data view in the PLC, um, I have that one up. So you can see it's changing a lot. So if we go over here and we run this script a couple of times, we'll see here at 13159, 13181, and you can kind of see that it's changing about that much on the uh, PLC. So um, if we wanted to read a something else, so like we're reading an input register right now, there are various ways to do that. They're just uh, changes in how you uh, describe it. Um, let's see here, let's pull that up because there's a, there's going to be, um, let's go over here to here. So we've got, Different, we've got different, uh, different things we can read. Uh, sorry, Let's see here. Uh, let's uh, put this in here. So, the um, so one of them is coils. All right, so coil registers, coil statuses. Okay, um, discrete inputs is uh, is another one. Okay, so um, 
You can read discrete inputs coming in here. You can read uh, holding registers, all right, and then input registers. So um, I believe that input registers is talking about FCO4s um, for, for whatever reason. I, I guess the code is, I, I'm not 100% sure. I, I have actually not tried again how to do holding registers. So we will, let's go to holding registers. Let's see what that is. Maybe it's going to read the same thing. Um, as this. So we'll do a little experiment here. Run this script. Okay, so holding register is zero. I don't know what the holding registers are in um, Automation Direct's uh, stuff. I don't think I have any of those defined. So input registers. So we'll read the input register again. All right. And we'll do that. Okay, so we're getting a, a number out again. Now, the next thing we want to do is maybe do read a discrete input. Okay, now if we do this, we are not going to be reading out in, um, so do that, put a parenthesis back there. So if we do results.register, we're gonna get an error. So um, it's not a register anymore, it's going to be um, similar syntax, but it's gonna be bits. So let's copy that, change this to bits. And print result.bits. Let's see what that does for us. Okay, so um, evidently in uh, register zero, we are false, 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 false. So I think if I remember right, maybe it's 19 or 20. Let's see, 19, nope. It must be 20. Okay, so 20. 20 we're showing as a true bit. All right, the first bit of it is true. Um, if we go back over to the PLC, See what it says. So that should be 21, which right here, we got 21 as uh, true um, in the PLC. So we're reading that input into our, um, into, into PyModBus here. So this is pretty useful because once we pull our data from our PLC um, over the network into Py, you know, ModBus, you can do whatever you want with it. You can, you can also do the reverse, you can write stuff um, Similar scripting, uh, similar languages, and it's defined inside of the uh, <clears throat> the PyModBus um, information here. It's it's uh, I forget. Let's see. Let's go back up here. It's it's in I think the one of these packages up here. It'll tell you there's a list of what all these commands do. Um, but you know you can you can write to these registers as well. So. Um, one interesting bit of uh, tech that we could do is like maybe we could query somewhere like um, Weather Underground, um, pull in what the temperature is going to be outside. Uh, I had someone talking to me about this somewhere else and, t you know, turn something on. Uh, we want to turn on uh, a heater outside uh, to warm up pavement or something or we want to turn on a light at a specific time every day. We could do that based on sunrise and sunset, um, things like that, pulling stuff from the Internet. And you don't have to pay for any of these services. Like you can query uh, Weather Underground with Telnet. Um, you could also go to a Google Doc and you could use something like XML to pull data off of a page, like scrape it and pull it off the page. And then you can use that data to make specific decisions. Like, I don't know, see so you're running, I don't know, bit miners and you needed to be constantly checking the price of Bitcoin and electricity to find out um, whether or not it's profitable to run something. You could do that. Um, there's, uh, there's a, like infinite possibilities. Um, and the, 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 the reason we want to use PLC because we want to use a PLC, right? Like there's very specific reasons in industry why we use it, but there's also uh, a lot of stuff that the PLC natively isn't going to do. It's not very smart. Um, it doesn't have great software. Uh, a lot of logic's pretty crappy, but it always works. So, um, this is a short, uh, whole, sort of semi-short video on how to get your data to and from your PLC with uh, Pi Modbus. So hopefully this is helpful to someone. Um, this is probably going to be an absolutely terrible video to post up and there's going to be a lot of crap about me talking and rambling on and not making any sense. If anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, send me a message um, and I will uh, try to help. So thank you very much and hopefully this is helpful to someone.